Welcome to my video abstract. Today I would like to share my work with Dr. Byte on predicting the VIX index with adaptive machine learning. Starting with our research design, we aim to predict the daily directional uh, changes of uh, VIX index. We start by looking for the economic and finance variable that is relevant. To this end, we find 278 variable, including technical and fundamental variables, some macroeconomic variables, and other international financial market data. We include seven machine learning algorithms, start from the, some simple basic naive base uh, and uh, logistic regressions. We then include several algorithms which uh, relate to the decision tree predictions. And we include one uh, advanced, more complex uh, modeling uh, using neural network, the multi-layer perception algorithm. And at the end, we create an ensemble based on all of this algorithm. Our machine learning research design consists of three key steps. First, it is training and modeling selections. In the training stage, we use an auto ML approach with hyperparameter optimization. The model are chained and selected through the careful validation process. We do this training and model selection for each of the algorithm. And at the end of this state, first step, we will have the best model for each of the algorithm. The second is the validation and algorithm selections. We have, uh, we apply the best model into a set of out of sample data and compete and compare to select the best algorithm and model combination for our stage three implication, implementation. In the stage three implementations, we monitor the performance constantly. And when the model performance is dropped to a level that uh, lower than a preset uh, threshold, in the example of this paper is like the error rate is higher than 42.5%, and then a retraining will, will trigger, which taking me back to the, the, the same approach as we did in the training and model selection stage, going through the hyperparameter selections and cross validation to find a, a better model. At the same time, this actually adopt, uh, applied to a new set of the data as well, rather than the, same, the, the beginning set. In terms of the data, we always take about 4,000 observation for training and validation. And among that, about 90% of them we use it for the training purpose. And using that um, 3,600 observation, we, we divide it by fivefold uh, to, to select our best model. Uh, we have about 400 observation, which is about one and a half year or less than that. Uh, actually more than that, uh, one and a half a year data to, to validate the, the model. Um, and we have 11 years of out of sample data, truly out of sample test can be applied to this period. So what's the advantage of this uh, research design, especially the auto ML and the closed loop uh, adaptive learning? We refer to the stage three as the closed loop adaptive learning. First, obviously, is efficiency. When we automate the hyperparameter selections and optimize it, it makes the application easier to, to run with, with less human intervention. Second, less of a human intervention have further advantage because we preset all these uh, rules before the applications there will be less look back buyers or look forward buyers uh, when, when, when the researcher may 
tend to change the hyperparameter once they see the realized result. But in this framework, it will reduce the, the potential bias during this training and modeling process, especially for, for forecasting purpose rather than for influence purpose. Finally, because this is a systematic approach and it's adaptive, it makes the change of setting of the model is uh, checkable. When we when new situation come in, we the machine will decide whether or not to change the model. If if it's going to change the model, it will follow through the whole uh, structure, which will produce checkable outcome every time we do that. And and when it's checkable, it's also explainable in terms of why we're switching the model and why not. And and this also better for auditing purpose if we want to adopt this system for trading and there's some regulatory implication in there. Okay, um, so what have we found? Among the model, we, we present the training and validation result here. This is the stage one and two result. So for the ensemble training, the blue one, we can see that um, the more sophisticated model will, will generate better prediction accuracy and the, the simple one will, will generate around 50%, uh, not much different from 50%, it's actually slightly higher. Um, but when we look at the out of sample validation, this is more true performance of the model, um, the difference will be lower, but nevertheless the chance still there. Um, one thing we notice is the huge drop from this uh, MLP algorithm and that is a, a, a warning signal that potentially this is a overfitting problem here because the in-sample is so high, it can fit the model quite well in a nonlinear way, but this is do not actually produce the um, out-of-sample result as expected. Nevertheless, this is still higher than the naive basing approach. Uh, and uh, the the ensemble is it looks like it, it does actually taking the average of everything more or less uh, with a good uh, uh, out of sample uh, result so from at the end of 2009 we, we will if we should select a, uh, a algorithm to go for that the, the adaptive boosting uh, algorithm will be our choice if we in i mean for the paper's purpose we do not just uh, presenting the a depth boosting uh, result, but we're presenting everything here. And we can see that um, the, the, the 11 years of the truly out of sample implementation really still producing the similar pattern as we see in the validation stage. So that actually give us confidence that the validation and the training process really picking the model that we can trust in the longer run. Um, Especially the, the decision tree family model, they are doing quite well here uh, compared to obviously the benchmark is it's near 50% here. Um, and the MLP, again, the more complicated model doesn't do that well down the sample. So what is the economic implication uh, or application we can do? We know that VIX is not tradable. Uh, nevertheless, we, we first of all, we simulate a strategy assuming VIX is tradable to see the economic significance of the directions we predict associated with the magnitude of the, the, the VIX size change. So we can see this as like a size weighted accuracy rate rather than really the return it earned for a strategy. But from here, we can see that the adapt boosting uh, will generate the long shot return of 90 basis point daily. This will annualize to about 225%. Uh, that is, uh, if, if this VIX instrument is tradable, it will be huge uh, a huge return for, for a strategy for the 11 years. This is the average uh, return of 11, uh, annual, annually 11, for 11 years. Um, but nevertheless, this is actually telling us that the model, when the model predicted right, it does actually associate with significant uh, size movement in VIX. In our paper, we also study some Im implementation of our signal 
with tradable instruments. In this example, we show the trading strategy applied to VIX futures. We do not just apply the signal itself, but also take into the, the consideration the fact that there is a negative futures, a VIX futures premium. We can see that the adaptive boost strategy can produce 36 basis points after cost return. The cost is, is considered by the um, bid and ask spread of the futures contract. This annualized to 90% annually. Importantly, this is more than 50% higher than the short only strategy. Of course, investing in this VIX future strategy always encounter a potential large downside risk when volatility spike, and we discuss more in the paper. A large part of the paper is devoted to study the source of predictability. We first conduct the variable importance study and find that the weekly job list claim is the most important variable contributing to the predictability. Other variables such as uh, day of the week or the other technical indicator also feature highly. We then look at the research design such as closed loop uh, continuous learning and a balanced sampling technique they both actually find, show to be very useful in increasing the predictability. Um, we then actually explore whether we can improve the economic gain by predicting four outcome instead of two, and we do not find any favorable outcome there. We then study the signal delay by looking at using the signal with some sort of time delayed, I, for example, predicting today and trade tomorrow morning or, or tomorrow, tomorrow close to close return. And we find the model is quite capable of uh, performing uh, this kind of prediction with some gap. Finally, uh, we look at volatility spike. We show that Volatility spike are truly exogenous event to the system, so we cannot predict them according to the data we collect. However, those models are quite good at recover from the volatility spike compared to other trading strategies that do not have this kind of modeling. This research makes three contributions. First, we show that VIX is predictable and the source of predictability is originated from a large collection of variables and the systematic ML research design. Variables such as the week of weekly job list claim and the days of the week are important to the predictability which can inform future theoretical research. We also contribute to the automated and explainable ML by proposing a framework consists of two key elements. First is the auto ML with a hyperparameter optimization algorithm. With such a presented um, framework, it removes the human bias from the tuning process. Second, it has the performance-based closed-loop continuous learning, which makes model switching systematic and trackable. This is especially important for developing and testing out-of-sample forecasting. Finally, our study find that there is a bias variance trade-off in matching the complexity of the ML algorithm and the data generating process. We find that the most naive process or the more, most com complex ones, such as the uh, neural network, 
algorithm doesn't perform well out of sample compared to the decision tree type of algorithm. Thank you very much for your time. Your comments and suggestions are most welcome. The paper is available on SSI. Thank you and see you next time.